So I've been a Windows user my entire life. And like only recently did I ever consider switching to Mac OS. And it was just for the sake of adding a new skill to my CV. Apple released the refresh of their MacBook line last November, which shipped with their own in-house processor, the M1 chip. So basically their new M1 chip is the CPU, GPU and RAM all in one chip, or as they call it, an SOC or system on chip. It uses the same type of processor they use in their iPhones, meaning it's an ARM-based CPU that receives ARM-based instructions. And Apple claimed some insane improvements, promising nearly three times CPU performance, five times graphics performance, and 11 times machine learning performance compared to their last MacBook 13. That's all right, but they also claimed 20 hours of battery life. 20 hours. So I traded my old MacBook in for the new base model M1 and wanted to find out what the hype was about. Here it is, the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch. It looks the exact same as a previous generation MacBook Pro 13. In fact, you probably wouldn't be able to tell them apart if they were right beside each other. And the only real differences are the new M1 chip, a slightly larger battery, better so-called studio quality mics, and that's it. Now, I've been using it for a little over three weeks as my daily driver, and here's what I've got to say. The MacBook Pro line without a doubt has the best speakers in any laptop, with a 16 inch at the top and a 13 inch just below it. Nothing even comes close, the bass, the clarity, the highs, mids and lows, even at high volumes there's basically no distortion. Here's a quick speaker test. I enjoy typing on this keyboard, I actually do. It's nice and deep for a laptop and whenever I'm coding it feels nice and responsive. Above the keyboard we have the touch bar and I have mixed feelings about it. I like the idea and it does come in useful for adjusting things like brightness, volume and skipping songs but apart from that, that's all I really use it for. Beside it is the escape key and fingerprint sensor that also doubles as the power button. The fingerprint sensor is great and fast, like really fast, but the start of the show is the trackpad. I love it. It's the best trackpad on any laptop out there, hands down. Like the gesture control, how it feels, the vibration motors. So how does it actually perform? In one word, unreal. Genuinely unreal. So there are three types of applications on these new M1 chips. Optimized, not optimized, and iOS slash iPad apps. Optimized apps like Final Cut Pro, Microsoft Edge, and IntelliJ perform amazing. Even with 10 different apps open, it doesn't lag or feel slow. So on a typical day, I would have Discord open, 27 different tabs, Notion for taking notes, Microsoft Teams for lectures, and either IntelliJ or RStudio open, depending on which homework I'm working on. And the only thing that feels slow are the apps that aren't M1 optimized. The laptop is fast and responsive, compiling code on it feels instant, and regular day-to-day -day tasks like watching videos or scrolling online feel clean and smooth. There are some cons however, so with the not optimized apps they run through Rosetta 2. For most apps it works, but there are the occasional glitches and hiccups that do get annoying. One really annoying fact is that the entire Adobe suite is not M1 optimized. When it comes to using and installing iOS and iPad apps, I've never actually found this feature to be useful, because the popular apps and games like Instagram, Snapchat and Clash of Clans aren't actually available in the app store when you search for them. And the only other way to get them is by sideloading them into your MacBook. Overall, the Apple claims were true. This new M1 chip outperforms their Intel counterparts in almost every way, and we can only really expect that this will get better over time as developers optimize their apps for the M1. Apple could have just left it at improving the performance. Like, if the performance was improved and battery life stayed the same, that would have already made a good product. But since the new M1 chip was built on a 5 nanometer process, this allows the chip to have up to 3 times the performance per watt than their previous gen MacBook. What does this actually mean? Well, Apple claimed that you can get up to 20 hours of screen on time on the MacBook Pro, 
I haven't tested this out yet, but I can tell you that the cycle count of my current MacBook is only three, meaning in my thorough testing from when I received the MacBook up until now, I've only been able to drain the battery completely three times. The battery is just great. I went on a four hour road trip a couple of weeks ago where I used Premiere Pro, After Effects and 30 different tabs to edit my first video and by the end of the four hours of an extremely intense workload, the battery percentage was at 27%. That is unreal, especially considering the apps weren't M1 optimized and therefore take up more processing power. In terms of day-to-day -day use, with my regular workflow of coding, attending lectures, meetings and media consumption, on average I end the day on 43% after using it for like 10 hours, which is amazing. My old MacBook would drain after 4 hours with the same workload. Depending on what you do, the M1 MacBook Air might actually be better for you. The Geekbench benchmark shows that they actually perform similarly. The only differences are that the Pro has a bigger battery, a fan, yes the M1 Air has no fan, better speakers, a better microphone and a slightly brighter screen. But is that worth the $300 difference? There really are only two main reasons why I bought the Pro over the Air. The first is what I like to call sustained performance. Because of the fact the Air doesn't have a fan, you can't have the processor operate at 100% for long periods of time because it will start thermal throttling. What this means is that when the processor gets too hot, it cuts down on performance. And this only really matters if you're doing things like video editing, where you need to have the performance at 100% for long periods of time. So if you're doing things like 3D graphics rendering, video editing, and compiling large datasets, I would recommend getting the MacBook Pro. The second biggest reason is definitely the battery life. Like depending on how you use it, you could go days without charging the battery. So if you're someone who likes to travel or use your laptop a lot unplugged, I would definitely recommend getting the Pro over the air. But in terms of long term longevity, the MacBook Air is actually better. Because of the fact that there are no fans, this means that there are no mechanical moving parts and dust doesn't get into your system. At the end of the day, for the average student or person, the best laptop to buy would probably be the M1 MacBook Air. It's a great laptop for trying to get into the Apple ecosystem and it by far outperforms any laptop out there with the same price. Now don't get me wrong, the MacBook Pro is a great laptop. It has everything the MacBook Air has, but with better battery life, slightly better performance and features. But I don't know if it's worth an extra $300 for the majority of people.